Hey guys, let's talk about a post that came in in the Facebook group, Total Knee Replacement Support Group for Kind People. This is related to a member who had their physical therapist pushing down on their knee to try and improve extension. I'm gonna read the post and then I'll share my thoughts on the topic. So Sarah said, today my PT pushed down on my leg, tried to increase extension. OMG, it was so painful. I know there must be less torturous ways to improve extension. At week one and two, I was doing great. Now I'm almost five weeks and my extension is stuck at around five degrees and I'm in so much more pain than I was. Ups and downs for sure, sad face. So I wanna say it's not uncommon for me to hear those stories. You guys are on the channel. You know that I've shared very similar experiences from other members in the group and even my own patients. I know that I've been guilty as a therapist of pushing my patient a little too far because you are the only one that knows what you're experiencing and I don't know what else you're doing during the day. So for those of you that got sore after I worked on you, I apologize for everybody else. Let's see if we can learn a lesson from this. So I rarely um, push down on a knee to try to improve extension. I know that's the motion that we're trying to get, but I find that if I can gently hold the ankle and I can provide a little traction through the lower extremity, through the leg. So if you imagine you're sitting with your leg out or you're laying on your back with your leg out and the therapist would hold you at the ankle and create a little bit of tension pulling down through the length of the leg, the knee, right? So if your knee is flexed, if I pull, the knee is naturally going to want to straighten. The other benefit of providing traction is it does gently open up the knee joint just a little bit to provide some space for the extension to happen. Typically, if I try to push down on a knee, especially an inflamed knee that's sensitive, the patient has a natural kind of um, protective mechanism that makes them tense up. Their hamstring clits, click, click. <laughs> can't talk. Their hamstring kicks in, they tense up, they're fearful, they know that it's going to hurt. It's just not a pleasant experience and I really don't see any benefit to trying to increase range of motion that way. As soon as my patient starts to experience pain, any chance of increasing range of motion is going to be gone. There, there's a time to push through the pain. Gaining range of motion after a knee, knee replacement is not usually the time to push through the pain. So um, to you, Sarah, I would recommend, you know, talking to a therapist and see if they could do a little bit of traction through the legs. It's a manual traction controlled by the therapist. It might be more comfortable for you. For everybody else, these are conversations that should be had with your therapist. I can't imagine a therapist out there that if you say, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to find another way. I can't imagine a therapist that wouldn't go, go in a different direction, that wouldn't try to help you, try to work with you, even if they thought you were going to be limited in range of motion, they would still be required to go by what you requested because ultimately you're the, ther you're the patient, you're the one in charge. And I've had that conversation. I've told my patients, look, I know what the surgeon wants. I know what you've been told, but the reality is if it takes six months instead of three months, I think you would rather me do it with less pain, less discomfort, and a longer duration than to try and push it harder, flare everything up, increase the inflammatory response, and now you're doing less in a day instead of more. Most of the time when I hear a patient tell me that they feel worse, uh, it's usually because they're doing too much. Either they're doing too much on their own, they're doing too much in the clinic, and, and very rarely have I ever seen a patient who actually took a day off, who literally did nothing, and they didn't do better. Because remember, our tissue needs time to heal. Even when we're working to gain improvement, if we let it calm down, if we reduce the inflammation with rest, with cryotherapy, with whatever mechanism you choose, that will result in a better outcome the next day. I'm not saying take a week off. I'm saying take 24 to 36 hours. Um, nobody's going to lose much range of motion. Nobody's going to lose much functional gain in 24 to 36 hours, especially five weeks post-op. So food for thought. Thank you so much for sharing, and I will catch you guys all on the next video.